Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the exception handling. To understand the exception handling, we are taking the example here. Let us suppose that we have created a form. In this form, we have taken two labels. One is A and B. Now here we have taken the text box. So A will provide the value in the text box one, and B will provide the value in text box two. Now when the user will click on the button, then A divided by B will come to the text box three. Now afterward, we are going to enter the values. Let us assume that I am the normal person who is a student in the class. If my faculty give me such type of question, I will make the program and I will provide the value of A as four and B as two. And we know that four divided by two is nothing but two. So two will come here. So that is the normal people which we make the program. There are some other people in the class, or we can say that some students who will make the program in different way. They are not going to provide the proper value. They will just test the program. Just like few people will write the value of A as four and B as zero. We know that anything divided by zero is infinity, and infinity is nothing inside the System, so here the system can go to the inconsistent state. So these things are called the exception. So here we don't know that in A divided by B what will come. So I am putting a question mark here because there can be infinity or system can go to the coding phase. Well, if we talk about the exceptions. The system goes to the coding, and it just give you the option that please correct it, correct the code, or provide something so that I can handle it. Such type of things are called the exception, because here we are providing zero in the division, and this thing is called the exception, which the normal people don't do. The normal people provide the value four and two, and we make simply four divided by two. Which comes as two, but if we talk about exceptions, the exceptions provide four by zero, five by zero, or anything divided by zero. So such things are called the exception. And for such exceptions, we are having the exception handling. So we can say that exception handling is going to handle the exceptions, and these exceptions which come on the runtime. Many of people get confused between exception and the errors. Errors are different and exceptions are different. Exceptions are those things where we provide some different value and system go to the inconsistent state. But here, if you understand, dividing the four with zero is not a error because anybody can divide. It is not a error. It is an exception. Something different. So first of all, we should understand what are the different types of errors. The first type of error is syntax error. Such type of error appear when we write the wrong syntax. We know that all the languages support some kind of syntax. Let us suppose that we are going to declare one integer variable in the VB.NET. So simply we are going to write dim. A as integer, so that is what we are going to provide. Now, afterward, we don't have to provide any semicolon because this is not a C programming. But let us suppose somebody by mistake provide the semicolon afterward. So this is a error as per the system, and it is called the syntax error because some syntax is provided and you are not following that. The second type of error is the logical error. When we are making a program for different purpose and program is giving some different result, then this error is called the logical error. In this case, your application or the program which you are making will provide the wrong output. Let us suppose that you was trying to make the program for sum of two numbers. Here we know that a plus b. Will be the logic. A is the first number. B is the second number. 
बट बाय मिस्टेक ड्यू टू हरी वी आर राइटिंग ए इन टू बी ना सिंटेक्स वाइज प्रोग्राम इज करेक्ट बिकॉज ए इन टू बी इज द पार्ट ऑफ द सिंटेक्स बट योर आउटपुट विल बी डिफरेंट सो दिस इज अगेन अरर एंड विच टाइप ऑफ एरर इट इज इट इज द लॉजिकल एरर बिकॉज द लॉजिक वी हैव प्रोवाइडेड इज रॉन्ग वी शुड बी प्रोवाइडेड एडिशन बर हेयर वी हैव प्रोवाइडेड द मल्टीप्लीकेशन द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ एरर इज रन टाइम एरर कंपाइल टाइम एरर आर दो एर वेन एवर वी राइट द प्रोग्राम जस्ट लाइक सिंटेक्स एरर एंड देर आर सम रन टाइम एरर वेन एवर वी एग्जीक्यूट द प्रोग्राम एंड वी आर रनिंग इट एट दैट टाइम सम एर कम दो आर कॉल्ड रन टाइम एरर लेट एस सपोज वी हैव मेड द प्रोग्राम वेयर वी आर डिवाइडिंग टू नंबर्स ए डिवाइड बाय बी द नॉर्मल पीपल विल प्रोवाइड द वैल्यू ऑफ ए एस फोर and b as 2 and we know that the result of that will be 2 but there are some exceptional people on the run time who are going to provide the value of a as 4 and b as 0 and we know that anything divided by 0 is infinity and that infinity is nowhere because this infinity is not the part of system so such type of errors comes as the run time error now exceptions are the run time error means when we are running at the time the exception comes so these are handled by the exception handling so here this run time error is the creating the exceptions and these exceptions we are going to handle using exception handling techniques now we are learning that what are the different exceptions which are available into the system or we can say that what are the system defined exceptions there are so many exceptions which are already defined into the system and they are called the system defined exception the first exception is index out of range exception now to understand that we are taking the example of a array so here in this array let us suppose that the name is a and here we know that array is accessed with the help of the index values so 0 1 2 3 and 4 at these indexes we are entering some values here let's say 7 2 3 9 and 6 so these are the values which are present let's assume that somebody want to display these array elements into the message box let's say we are writing the message box here msg box we know that with the help of that one message box will be displayed in the bracket if i provide a a is the name of array and if i am writing the index let us suppose that by mistake i am writing the index 5 we know that this 5 index is not the part of array because here we can see that the array index going from 0 1 2 3 and 4 only but here we are accessing a5 so in the array a 5 is not present and there program will be going to the coding and will show you the exception that it is index out of range exception the index you are going to access is actually out of range because the range is from 0 to 4 so such exception occur here we are learning that different different exceptions which occur and after that we will learn that how to handle them handling the exception is called the exception handling so the first exception which can come is the index out of range exception which comes when we are going to access the index value of array which is actually out of range of that array the next exception is null reference exception to understand the null reference exception let us suppose we are writing a code suppose that we are having a string variable so i am writing here string a a is the variable now after that i am writing equal to and in this variable a i want to take the data from the file let us suppose that we are having some file and i am writing file dot open and in that bracket we are providing the 
file name let's say x y z dot txt is the name of file now what we are doing here from x y dot txt file we are going to open that and putting the data into the string type variable a but assume that our code is running and during runtime this xyz file is not available maybe it was deleted by somebody else or maybe it was corrupted so now because of that the system code will open that means your program will go to the coding and it will show you that null reference exception because you are referring a file which is not available into the system so whenever you are referring to a file or anything onto your system or anywhere else which is not available so that is called null reference exception the reference you are using is null is not available so this is null reference exception the next type of exception is argument exception to understand the argument exception we are taking the example here let us suppose that there is a procedure whose name is sum now here inside the sum we can take two variables let us suppose that one variable is of integer type let us suppose i am writing a here i am assuming that this a is of integer category if we are talking about the c c++ then we know that we will write int a and if we are using the dot and we will write the a as integer so i am not going on the syntax we are learning how to work with that now let us suppose that there is another argument which is b now this is let us suppose of string type now these are the two arguments of a procedure and this is the body of procedure the procedure is having its body in which we are having certain code that will run when the procedure will be called let us assume that if we talk about the normal people normal people are going to call this procedure with the sum that is the name now here the first variable we know that is the integer so we'll provide 7 comma second variable is a string let's say we are providing some name i am giving my name here so this is the proper way of calling so this is perfectly fine so there is no problem it will work fine so let us assume that somebody is calling this procedure with the name sum and it is not providing the integer value it is first of all providing the string here now afterward it is providing some float value let's say 7.9 so that is not following the argument specification because here we can see that integer a but here we are passing the string and afterward we are having string and here we are passing the float so that is the exception or there can be the chance that person is just calling this procedure sum and it only provide one value let's say here it is only provide the first value which is perfectly wrong and second value it is not providing so that is also wrong so these are the exceptions whenever we are not passing the value of arguments or we are not providing the proper argument we are not providing the sequence of the argument or we are not providing the range of the values let's say we are having the integer and we are passing the number in crores the integer cannot handle the number in crores for that we need long integer so such type of things where the argument is having the problem is called the argument exception the next exception is arithmetic exception now to understand the arithmetic exception we are taking the example here let us suppose that in the system we are having the code for a divided by b now here the user is providing the value of a as 4 and the value of b as 0 now we know that this 4 by 0 is undefined which is infinity this infinity sign is not there into the system so here the exception occur this is the arithmetic exception we know that 
divide by zero exception is a specific exception for dividing with the zero divide by zero exception is the part of arithmetic exception so whenever doing some calculation exception occur that is called the arithmetic exception the next exception which we are having is the super class or the base class for all the exceptions that is called the exception we know that there are so many exceptions just like we are having index out of range exception null reference exception argument exception arithmetic exception these all are the specific exception now in your program you don't know which type of exception will come then there is the main base class for all the exceptions which is called the exception now if you are writing only exception then it is going to handle all the exceptions all the exceptions are generated from this exception class so that's why if you are mentioning that all the exception can be handled so that is all about the exception handling